Hey everybody, welcome to Van Life Midlife. We are doing something just a little bit different today. We are out without the van. We are going to do just a quick overnight cold weather camping trip with a tent. So, no van this time. I'm leaving my car. Where is it? Leaving my car right here for the night in this pole barn of a relative's and I'm headed back off into the woods to find a place to set up. Okay, now this is a surprise. So I'm on a relative's land and my mother was here last weekend and she said all the corn had already been harvested. I had planned to find a spot in the corn to pitch my tent and sleep there for the night. But after she told me that the corn had already all been harvested, I was gonna go back in the woods but they have harvested the, I don't know, the front half of the fields, but not the back half. So if you look here, I've got corn that I can camp in. So that's what I plan on doing. So the plan was to go back into this field of corn behind me, find a patch of ground that didn't have corn growing on it and pitch my tent out amongst the corn stalks. We have had quite a bit of rain the last several days, so I don't know if that's going to happen. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to look, but looking at how muddy the ground is around here, uh, I'm not hopeful that I'm going to find a spot that is free of corn and also devoid of mud. I'm well into this cornfield and you can just see the whole ground is saturated. Even this area here, which is a little small, but which I might consider pitching a tent in, it's just completely muddy. This just isn't gonna work for me. So I'm gonna head back out of the cornfield and go find a spot in a field, just a regular grass field to throw my tent. So y'all, may not be able to tell by where the camera's positioned, but this is actually kind of a gnarly hill. Now I got up and have to go down the other side. So I think I found my spot right here in this uh, little clearing. It's at the edge of the woods and it's at the edge of some cornfields that have already been harvested. So although this looks similar to where I was a couple of weeks ago, it is actually not the place where I was a couple of weeks ago, but it is quite similar. But this is where I'm going to set up my tent and uh, maybe start gathering up some firewood. I am going to unpack my bag and show you guys what I brought uh, a little bit later on after I get my tent set up, but I wanted to show you this first. This is a little multi-tool that I found online. I was online earlier this week, basically looking at what kind of different, different uh, you know, camping crap you could buy, and I came across this. It wasn't very expensive, and I thought it looked interesting. It's a little hammer, We've got a little hatchet on the other side. Uh, it has some knives and some saws, things like that. I'm gonna see how many of these different tools I can use on this particular trip and decide whether or not this is something that I would wanna bring with me on a longer trip. Again, I'm just out here for one night, so I can have a little bit more weight. I can carry a, a little bit more weight and not be so selective about the things that I'm bringing. So I'm going to start by using this to pound in my tent stakes. Here we go. Okay, you know, it did fine. Honestly, this ground is very soft considering all the rain we've had. 
So I was able just to stand on the stakes and push them in. So as far as a hammer for using to pound stakes, yeah, I mean, I guess if you have it, but I wouldn't bring it just for that. Not on a uh, backpacking trip. If I was going to drive the van out here and pitch a tent for one of my kids, I might throw it in the van to have. But uh, so far, nope. We'll see what else I can use it for. I wanted to show you guys the other stuff I brought. You've already seen the tent. You've seen the small hatchet multi-tool that I brought. And now, I have brought way, way, way too much stuff for one night. Some things I brought because I wanted to be comfortable. Some things I brought um, because I wanted to see how they'd, how they'd work out. I am planning some longer trips in the spring and next summer, and I'm trying to figure out what's good to bring and what's not good to bring. Uh, I brought a pair of Crocs so that when I get up in the middle of the night to pee, I don't have to throw my boots on. I can just throw those on. Toilet paper, very important. I've got some soap for doing dishes. I've got some bug spray. I have two partially full canisters of propane for my stove. Along with that, I have my camp stove. I've got cookware in here, um, including knives, spoons, uh, cutlery to eat with. I won't use it all, but I just threw it all in there. Here is my food bag. And also within my food bag is my pots. I have some clothes to sleep in, just some sweatpants and a sweatshirt. And for this particular trip, I actually brought two sleeping bags. The reason I did that is, um, again, I'm not really so much worried about weight for this particular trip. Um, I have one really, really warm sleeping bag. This is my winter bag. It's not really a backpacking sleeping bag per se. Um, I haven't done a lot of backpacking in the winter. Uh, so I don't have a, a true cold weather sleeping bag. I am gonna get one for another trip that I'm planning on this winter. And when I do, I will review it here and let you guys know what I think of it. I also brought my summer bag and I did that for two reasons. Um, I can slip the summer bag in the winter bag if I need to tonight, if it gets that cold. Or what I'm probably gonna end up doing is laying the summer bag out over top of my sleeping pad to get myself up that much farther up off the ground. And then I will actually sleep in my winter bag. I've got a sleeping pad here, which I will blow up in just a minute. And here is my summer sleeping bag, summer slash fall. I think this is rated to 50 degrees. Um, it'd be a little frosty tonight if I only slept in that. So again, that's why I brought two sleeping bags. Okay, I've got the tent set up. So I'm all set for the night. Now we're going to turn our attention to this little multi-tool. I want to make it clear that I'm not sponsored by anybody. Nobody gave this to me. Nobody sent this to me. I literally bought this with my own money online earlier in the week. And I thought it was interesting. Um, and I thought I would bring it out here and see what I could do with it and whether it was even worth taking it on a longer trip. It is a little heavy. It's probably about two and a half pounds which if you're backpacking, um, you know, just a quick overnight like this where I hiked in maybe a mile, um, not a big deal. But as you get into 20, 25, 30 day, excuse me, 30 mile hiking trips, two and a half pounds is, is kind of a big deal. So I've got a hammer on one side. I've got a little hatchet on the other side. I think you can see that. It also has some wire cutters right down here, uh, some pliers. On this side, I've got a fish descaler, which I'll never use, I'm not a fisherman. There's a, also a small file on the other side of that. There are, there's a bottle opener and there's several different levels of uh, uh, wrenches. So if you have, I don't know, small bolts that you need to, need to turn in a pinch, those would work. 
There's also a saw here, which I'm going to use in a minute. There is a Phillips head screwdriver. And then finally, a knife. So let's start out with the saw and see what I can do with it. See if maybe I can make some kindling with it um, and get a fire started. All right, here's my inaugural test run with the saw. We're going to see how it does. Okay, this piece of wood is actually fairly green. Um, I, it was down, I figured it had been here for a couple years. Uh, it's actually pretty green, so I'm going to go see if I can find a drier piece of wood to use this on because it's not cutting through the green stuff very well. Okay, I found a drier piece of wood here. We'll see how the sawing goes with a drier piece. Ah, boy, I don't know. I don't know if I really see that the little saw on this um, offers any benefit. There's just a lot easier ways to gather up wood to make a fire. Um, I don't know, I might try using it a couple more times while I'm out here tonight, but uh, so far I'm going to say no to the saw. Next on the agenda is to see how the hatchet works. Let's give it a go. The hatchet actually worked very, very well. I was uh, really surprised. Um, it's pretty sharp and it cut through the little branches very, very easily. Um, handy to have to make up some kindling for your fire. Jury's still out on whether or not I'd bring it with me. I'm going to have to try a couple other things and, you know, see if it's worth the wait. All right, next we're going to get a fire going. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on dinner, even though uh, I'm not going to eat for probably another 90 minutes or so. What we're doing tonight is we are doing pasta with meat sauce. What I've got is I've got some pasta sauce and meat that I dehydrated a couple of weeks ago in my food dehydrator. It's uh, actually left over from a backpacking trip that I took, oh, probably six weeks ago. It's been sitting in my freezer. So I figured we'd go ahead and use it tonight. So this is all dehydrated. Mmm. It smells really good. So I've got some pasta sauce that's dehydrated and looks like leather. This is just out of a can. I like to use ground sausage. I cook it up, I brown it all the way, and then I throw that in the food dehydrator and dehydrate that overnight. And then I've got some dehydrated peppers, onions, and some garlic in here as well. Throw that all together, add a little bit of water, about like so. Throw it on the stove, put the lid on it, let it heat up for just a couple of minutes. We'll stir it up, and I have found that with reheating this sauce, if you bring it up to a boil, stir it up, and let it sit for about an hour, it tends to rehydrate a little bit better, and it's tastier. So here we go. There's dinner. I'm going to cut this off, and we'll let the sauce sit for about 30, 40 minutes see how it does. I might need to add a little more water and reheat it again. But it's looking pretty good to me. Here's what the sauce looks like after being reheated and then sitting for about 45 minutes. 
but I'm going to try something a little bit different this time. I am going to put some more water in here, heat the sauce back up, and then throw my noodles in. Uh, I threw the uh, jacket back on because the sun's starting to go down and it is getting chilly. But at any rate, we're boiling here really, really well. And I have two different kinds of noodles. I've got some rotini noodles that I'm throwing in now. And then I also have some egg noodles that I'm gonna throw in here in about five minutes. The egg noodles don't take nearly as long to cook up. And the reason I have two different kinds of noodles is that's what I had in the pantry at the house. So I didn't have enough of either one to just bring one, so I brought both. And again, I've never tried this before, cooking up the noodles in the sauce, but uh, we're going to experiment with it and see how it does. Okay, you ready? I'm excited. <laughs> I don't know if y'all can see this with the angle of the camera, but this looks amazing. And I think that I have found a new way to cook my pasta while I'm camping. I'm going to throw a little bit on my plate here. Add a little bit of Parmesan cheese. And check that out. That looks so good. And I'm hungry. So I will see you guys after dinner. Mm. So I don't know if you all can see me right now. I don't know if the camera's picking me up, but it's twilight right now. And I think I'm going to go for a bit of a night hike. Get out and enjoy the air. I'll pick you all up in a bit. All right. Yes, it is Halloween, but I am not trying to be spooky. Um, <laughs> it's dark, and the little light that I brought for the top of the tent is apparently not working. It was working when I packed it in my bag, but I think it might have gotten switched on while it was in my bag and turned on and it ran the batteries out. So here I am with just a little flashlight which is just fine because I'm going to bed. We'll see you in the morning. Good night. Good morning, everybody. It's, uh, it's about seven o'clock, but we fell back last night. So it's still dark out. It's also starting to rain a little bit. So I think what I'm gonna do is cook some breakfast uh, right here in the tent. Well, not in the tent, in the vestibule have a little breakfast and then get out of here. I'm going to film this as best I can, but without my big light that got burnt out last night, I don't know how much of this you'll be able to see. So I'm gonna have some coffee and some oatmeal this morning, then I think I'm gonna pack up and get out of here. I don't like tent camping in the rain. Call me a fair weather camper, I guess. So breakfast this morning is basically just going to consist of boiling water. I've got some oatmeal and coffee. So I also want to say that cooking in a tent like this is uh, not recommended but it's what I'm doing this morning. There she is. I've got some cranberry flaxseed oatmeal with a box of raisins that I added to it. And that's breakfast. I'm going to eat this, pack up, and then get out of here. The one thing I am going to do is, instead of taking these rocks back and throwing them back out in the field where I found them, is I'm just going to set them by the trees over there. I'll probably come back to this spot and camp later on and that'll save me from having to go gather them up again.
Well, I'm gonna call that a successful quickie overnight. Last thing I gotta do is get rid of that. I don't think it's worth the wait. Um, a couple of the things I found useful, but no more useful than a multi-tool. So that can stay here. See you later. You knew I wasn't going to leave that sitting there. I also had to come back for the camera.